Hi all, today we're going to go through Unit 4, Topic 2, uh, Solution Concentration. This will be a multi-part lesson where we're going to break down different types of solution concentration. Now, by the end of this section, the, the whole package, you should be able to define concentration, dilute and concentrated, should be able to perform calculations involving different methods to determine the concentration of a solution, involving percentage concentration, very low concentrations, and molar concentrations. And then we should be able to integrate the three equations we learned to calculate the mole uh, to identify any variable, whether that's using n is equal to mass divided by molar mass, n is equal to big N divided by Na, and n is equal to C times V. And we'll be spending a lot of time trying to go through to practice doing these calculations. All right, so if we look at this, what is the difference between these solutions? They each have the same solute dissolved in it. However, what's the difference? If you said that the one on the left is more dilute and the one on the right is more concentrated, you're right. So going through, what does that actually mean? If we're going through and we have a dilute solution, that means we have very little solute dissolved with the solvent. Versus if we have a concentrated solution, we have a lot of the solute dissolved in the solvent. So we know that um, many aqueous solutions are colorless. Right? So unlike the previous example here where we can kind of get a gauge to say how much solute is dissolved right, and say that the one over here was dilute and the one over here was concentrated, if we have a solution that is formed from a solute that doesn't give a color, you have no real way of knowing how much is actually dissolved by just looking at the solution. So that's why it's gonna be really important that we go and label the solutions to give you context in terms of how much of the chemical is dissolved. And what we're gonna to try to look at is different ways of trying to report solution concentration. And we're gonna see that it's really gonna depend on what we're dealing with and how much solute we actually have, along with the states of both the solute and the solvent. So concentration broadly can be defined as the quantity of a given solute in a solution, okay? Where if something's dilute, it has a relatively small quantity of solute per volume of solution, versus if something's concentrated, it has a relatively large quantity of solute per unit of solution. Now, in general, any concentration can be expressed by this ratio, where concentration is equal to the quantity of solute divided by the quantity of solution. And we're going to see the units for both the solute and the solution are going to change depending on the context. However, all the different equations that we're going to look at are all going to have this in common, where it's always solute divided by solution. Now, there are several different ways of measuring concentration of a solution. The first is percentage concentration, and that's what we're going to focus on in today's lesson where you can have percentage volume by volume, percentage weight by volume, and weight by weight, where these, are, these units are really referencing the state of the solute and the solution. So when we're looking at here, right, when we're dealing with concentration, it's solute over solution. So volume by volume says that the solute is going to be a liquid, and the solution is going to be a liquid. Here, the solute is going to be a solid. The solution is going to be a liquid. Here, the solute is a solid. And here, the solution is also going to be a solid. And we'll see as we break that down further in, in the upcoming slides. The next type are very low concentrations. So those are dealing with parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion. And we're going to see that's going to be very relevant for environmental contaminants. Um, if you have a bottle of water, take a moment and maybe look at the ingredients list. Uh, and you'll see that it might show you the ions that are dissolved and their respective concentrations. And typically those will be reported in parts per million or parts per billion. And we're going to deal with molar concentration. That's really going to be our focus for chemistry. And we're going to see how we can integrate the other two equations that we've learned for the mole to deal with molar concentration. And we'll come up with that at the last uh, part of the lesson. 
So percentage volume by volume. So we're starting off with percentage concentration. So this happens when we have a solute that is a, that is a liquid and the solution that's formed is also a liquid. So a very common example of dealing with percent volume by volume concentration is vinegar. So if you take a moment and look at vinegar a little bit further, you can see here how it says 5% acidity. What that's actually saying is that you have 5% of the solute in that solution. And the solute for vinegar is going to be acetic acid and the solvent, what it's dissolved in is water. Here's another example, a uh, hand antiseptic, where it says 70% V slash V ethyl alcohol. So in here to make this up, you have 70% of your solute, which is ethanol dissolved in water. So 4% volume by volume, Many consumer products, as we've indicated, vinegar um, and hand sanitizers are conveniently labeled with their concentration ratios expressed as percentages. So when we see that a vinegar label says 5% acetic acid by volume, that means that five mils of pure acetic acid is dissolved in a hundred mil of solution. So we can rewrite that and say that we have five mil of our acetic acid dissolved in a hundred mil of solution. Right? And that gives us our 5% volume by volume or V slash V. This leads us to a general equation where the concentration for volume per volume is the volume of our solute divided by the volume of the solution times 100%. And the units for the concentration is going to be percent V slash V, meaning percent volume by volume. So let's see if we can try some sample problems to use this equation. So in the question here, it says a photographic stop bath contains 140 mils of pure acetic acid in a 500 mil bottle of solution. What is the percentage by volume concentration of acetic acid? And remember, we always want to use full grass to go through to solve these problems. So in the question, we're told, if we break it down, that it contains 140 mils of pure acetic acid, okay? So that is going to be your solute. So the volume of our solute is 140 mils. Going through, we're told that it's in a 500 mil bottle of solution. So that means that our volume of our solution is 500 mils. And we're asked to solve for our concentration of our solute. So take a moment and write out what the equation is and plug it, see if you can plug in your values to solve. Pause the video. So in here, we know that the concentration by volume by volume is equal to volume of our solute divided by our volume of our solution times 100%. So from here, all we're doing is plugging in our values. So we're taking here our 140 mils, Okay, and then we're going and dividing that by 500 milliliters. And then we're multiplying by 100%. And we get a concentration of 28.0 volume by volume. Okay, we should have a therefore statement at the end, but I didn't include that here. If we move on to sample problem two, it says a solution is made by adding 60 mil of pure acetic acid to 150 mil of water. What is the percentage volume by volume concentration of the solution? Now, if we think about this question, it's worded a little bit differently. So in here, we're told that we have, so let me switch to the pen mode, 60 mil of pure acetic acid, Okay, so that's going to be our solute, and it's added to 150 mils of water, where the water is our solvent. So in here, we can say that our volume of our solute is 60 mils. Our volume of our solvent is 150 milliliters, and we're trying to solve for our concentration. So in here, our equation for concentration is volume of solute over volume of solution times 100%. But in the question, we're not given the volume of the solution, we're given the volume of the solvent. 
So we need to figure out the volume of the solution. And that's going to equal the volume of our solute plus our volume of the solvent. So we're taking our 60 mils plus 150 mils and getting 210 milliliters as our volume for our solution. From there, we can plug in our values. So we can take our 60 mils, which is our volume of our solute, and divide it by 210 mils, which is our volume of our solution, and multiply by 100%. And we get a concentration of 28.6 volume by volume, V slash V. Now, another form of percent concentration is percentage weight by volume, percentage W slash V. So in consumer and commercial applications, weight is typically used to reference mass. So an example of that would be a hydrogen peroxide topical solution used as an antiseptic is 3% weight W slash V, weight by volume. So that means that we have three grams of hydrogen peroxide in every 100 mil of solution. So in here, this gives us another equation where our concentration is equal to mass of our solute over volume of our solution times 100%. Notice how our property for our solute is changing depending on the state. In volume by volume, the solute was a liquid. So the unit was dealing with a volume, which was in liters or milliliters. Here now we're dealing with mass. The substance, the solute is actually a solid, so we're dealing with it as a mass. Now, the one thing that's tricky about these problems is that the for percentage weight by volume, the mass of the solute is always expressed in grams, and our volume is always expressed in milliliters. Okay, so if we have a unit that is any different, we will have to convert it into grams for our solute and milliliters for our solution. Now, there's one more type of percentage concentration, and that's percentage weight by weight, percentage W slash W. And the general equation for that is concentration is mass of solute divided by mass of solution times 100%. And that's just when the solute and the solution are both solids. We will use a percentage weight by weight to show its concentration. And an example of that would be an alloy. So let's try a few sample problems to attempt these, these problems. So in this question, it says a solution of glucose is 5% W slash V. What is the mass of glucose in one liter of solution? So in this question, we're told 5% weight slash V. So in here, this is our concentration. Okay, and we know which concentration we're dealing with based on the units, and it says W slash V, so it's weight by volume. It's asking what is the mass of glucose? So glucose is our solute in one liter of solution. So we have our volume of our solution. So here we can go through and say, okay, our concentration is 5% weight slash V. Our volume of our solution is one liter, but because the units are weight per volume, the units for our volume must always be in milliliters. So we need to do the conversion. So we're multiplying by 1000 to get milliliters. So if we have one liter, that is equal to 1,000 milliliters. And we're asked to solve for our mass of solute. So if we look at this, we can pull up our equation and remember the units of our concentration will tell, tell us, excuse me, which equation we need to use. Because it says weight per volume, we're using mass of solute divided by volume of solution times 100%. From there, we can plug in our values so we said it's 5% here. Our volume of solution was 1,000 milliliters, and we can solve for mass. And if we do that, we will get 50 grams. Now, if we look at sample problem four, it says a sterling silver ring has a mass of 12 grams and contains 11.1 .1 grams of pure silver. 
What is the percentage weight by weight concentration of silver in the metal? So in the problem, the sterling silver ring has a mass of 12 grams. So that's our mass of our solution. And it contains 11.1 grams of pure silver. So that is our mass of our solute. So in here, it's asking weight, percentage weight by weight. So our equation is mass of solute divided by mass of solution times 100%. And then we're plugging in our values. So we have 11.1 .1 grams divided by 12.0 grams times 100%. We get 92.5% W slash W. So let's try one more example. I'll go through sample problem five. Uh, for six and seven, see if you can try it on your own and you can use the PowerPoint that's posted to see how you're doing. So in this question, it says a solution of hydrogen peroxide is made by dissolving three grams of H2O2 in 95 mils of water. What is the percentage mass by mass of the solution? So looking at this question, we're told that the mass of hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, is three grams. We're told that our volume of water that it's mixed with is 95.0 milliliters. Now in here, we need to go through and convert this to a mass because we're dealing with mass by mass or weight by weight. So we know that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. And we know that D is equal to M over V. So we can go and solve for our mass by taking D times V. So we have 95 uh, times one gram per mil and we get a mass of 95 grams. And I would expect you to show that in your calculation. So from there now, we know the mass of the solution. We can, take, we can add that up by taking our mass of our hydrogen peroxide and our mass of water. So we're adding three grams to 95 grams for a total of 98.0 grams. And then from there, we can just plug it into our equation. Concentration um, for weight by weight is mass of our solute divided by mass of our solution times 100%. So we have three grams divided by 98 grams times 100%, and we get 3.1% w slash w. I apologize for the messiness in the middle here. So see if you can go through and try sample problem six and seven. And as you can see, the solutions are written so you can get an idea in terms of how to go through to approach it. That ends the first part of this video. And in the next one, we'll pick up with looking at very low concentrations.